welcome to Wine One on One with Luxland ATL. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, if the backdrop looks different, it's because we are actually on vacation at Old Edwards Inn and Spa, um, which is a favorite of ours. But I figured, why not use this beautiful sitting room that we have and talk about some of my favorite wines, or just talk about some of my favorite things, which wine, red wine, is one of those. So we'll start by pouring a glass of wine, and I hope you guys will too with me, because this is the perfect time to actually sit back. This class is going to be fun. So, first things first, this is going to be actually a variety of wine. So I don't want anyone to assume that, hey, you got to spend a certain amount of money to get a really good bottle or glass of red wine. They range from $3, not saying we're getting a two buck chuck, but they range from $3 to infinity and beyond. We're going to stop at the 150 range. So we're going to give you a great $3 wine. We're going to give you a great $10 wine. We're going to give you a great $25 wine. And we're going to give you a $55 bottle of wine. And we're going to take it all the way to $150. And that's where we'll stop. Cheers. Tonight, we are drinking. Hold on, let's, let's get the cheers. What am I thinking? Cheers. So tonight, we are drinking one of my favorites. This is Dow, and if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes, because I don't wanna just speak to you guys without giving you full details on, hey, what are you tasting? Hey, what do you get from this bottle? Dow is, <clears throat> I would say, one of the best values that you can get out there for a cab. And I'm a Cabernet Sauvignon girl, <laughs> if you haven't heard already from the bad time video. If you haven't, go back and watch the bad time video. But this is one of my one of my favorites. Sorry, what am I talking about? That wasn't in the bad time video. Oop, scratch. Well, it was something else that you'll see later. But <laughs> Dow is one of our favorites. Um, I would say this is really easy to drink. This is $20. Um, and so when I'm gonna go through my notes, what I will make sure I tell you guys, because this an app I use. I use Vendino. Check out my notepad. It's really cute. Black girl magic. But so Dow on the Vendino scoreboard is a 4.1 and I believe they range from two stars to five um, and until we went to Napa in Italy um, I didn't really care about stars and I'll say I still don't but I pay attention to them just because you don't want to just go pick up a bottle or I don't want to just go pick up a bottle and then be mad when I open it up and I'm like, this is trash. So Vimbino helped me <laughs> to be able to let a little bit go of my control freak. I'm a Leo and a control freak. So I need to know what I'm buying because I don't waste money on anything. But I'm also listening to ATL, so I like a really good glass of wine. And sometimes you can get a 4.0 for $20. Sometimes you can get a 4.2 for $25. And you'll look at it and you'll go, well, wow, on Vendino, this is ranked the same as a Camus or the same as, an, as a cake bread. So Vendino is my best friend. So Dow says, great value for your money, which I've already said. It drinks like a $40 bottle of wine. So what you get when you taste it, you're getting a lot of red fruits, you're getting a lot of black fruits. And when they say red fruits, they're speaking specifically to strawberries, um, to cherries, um, and then black fruits are going to be your blackberries, your raspberries, your plums. Um, and I noticed when I started drinking calves, which my introduction to red wine was Pinot Noirs, which I still like, but calves have absolutely jumped over the bar and taken the main spot. 
Um, and I don't know if that's because of the complexity and how different they all are, or it could be because of the fruits. So I look forward to, at the end of this video, giving you guys some more um, tips and tricks on enjoying your red wine. But getting more into the Dow, which I'm drinking today, um, it has oaky notes. Calves all have a little bit of the oak and the vanilla and the chocolate. Um, and I think as we start to talk a little bit more about our reds, um, we can distinguish a little bit about the difference in flavors. And one of the things that I really like used to be curious about was tannin. So every time you're looking on the vino or you're walking down the aisle of a wine store and you see like a wine enthusiast, you know, a rating of a 91 or a 93, and you always see, see them say, oh, well, the tannin is, you know, deep, strong, flavorful. I'm like, it's a tannin. So <laughs> looking it up, a tannin is a class of an astringent a molecule, a biomolecule, excuse me, that binds and precipitates proteins and various other organic compounds. So this basically refers to the use of the oak, which comes from the barrel, or any other bark and any other tanning. Um, what usually the word comes from is what they use to tan animal hides. Not that anybody wants to think about animal flesh while they're drinking wine, but <laughs> think of all of the factors where the tannins come into play. And for red wine, um, that could be in the entire grape, um, could be in grape skin stems, it could be in the grape seeds, it could come from the textures. Um, but one good note that I forgot to mention is, if you drink a lot of whites, um, you're getting a lot of the fruity notes, but red wine is the only wine where they're actually using the entire grape. Did you know that? They're taking the entire thing. So when I thought of tannins, I always thought about leather. So it gives you more of the smoky notes. So take that into consideration. And let's get on to the next bottle. So our first wine tonight that we'll be talking about is all of three dollars. Three dollars, I said it, yes, three dollars, y'all. So we have upgraded from two buck chuck, but there is now $3 wine at Whole Foods. This is, um, I don't know if this is what the brand is called. You know, usually Whole Foods has the 365 brand, but this is Three Wishes. And all of the Three Wishes wines are sold at Whole Foods for $3. So we like to think of this as table wine. So this is something you can buy in bulk when you're having a party and you're getting a great value, but you also can fill it um, with other, you know, quality wines if that's what you like. But this is also gonna, you know, not give you that extreme hangover that some two buck chucks actually give, but it actually tastes pretty good. You wouldn't be able to tell if you did a blind taste. You would a little bit, but you wouldn't be able to tell as much that this was $3. So the notes, three wishes is a cab. I'm Ben Vino's app, <laughs> Three Wishes gets a 3.1, 3.1, which for me usually <laughs> would make me go, oh, you don't know, we not buying that. But <laughs> I bought Three Wishes before just because, you know, you're in the grocery store and you're like, hey, you know, if I have a bunch of guests coming over, if you have, you know, a party and you wanna make sure you have a variety, or hey, you need a cooking sherry or a white wine or a red wine that's going in your food. If you're making a red sauce, if you're making a pasta sauce, if you're making sangria, you can get a Pinot Noir. Um, if you're making a, you know, a white wine sauce, you need some cheap white wine because I would not recommend going and putting a $25 bottle of anything in your food, but because it's gonna cook down. But this is what you go for. So the notes are ruby red with sense of plum and berries. So it's very decent for $3, y'all. Also, <laughs> the reviews on Invino are actually hilarious because people are like, this is surprisingly decent. 
So absolutely check it out. I mean, can't go that much in detail on the $3 bottle, but you get what you pay for and it's actually worth probably six. So darlings, next bottle number two is going to be a Liberté Cabernet Sauvignon. And this is from Hase Roble. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it's basically from Napa Valley where all good calves go to be enjoyed. This one is actually from Trader Joe's. Who knew that Trader Joe's has such a selection, y'all? Like, because you literally can walk in there and you could just like explore. They have their Trader Joe's exclusives, which are really good. Like I would say if Trader Joe's was literally right up the street, like I would go in there all the time just to buy one. It is up the street. But you can never go into Trader Joe's and not just walk out with 10 bottles of wine. Well, I can't because who knows when I'm gonna ever be back in there. But, and I don't go for a two buck chuck because you have ones right next to that that are $4.99, like that are really good. You have a $6.99, you have an $8.99. This right here is $10.99. And Liberté is 3.6 on Vendino, y'all. So we're, we're going up a little bit, stepping it up a notch. Trader Joe's knows, knows what they're doing. So this one is, mentions dark fruits. So that would be blackberries, but this one actually comes in with something a little different. They talk about baking spices. So they talk about cloves, they talk about marzipan. Um, very easy to drink. Um, great for Cuban sandwiches, tortilla soups. Um, it's bold. The tannins are definitely smoky in there and it gives you more of that aged leather. And also a good thing to, to note about tannins is tannins is what gives you that dry, um, like on your palate when you start to taste the wine and you're like, what happened? All of a sudden all the air and the moisture has gone from your mouth. That's because of the tannins. Um, they don't go anywhere. You have to literally brush and scrape them off your teeth, your tongue, your lips. So it's definitely strong. Um, but this one on the reviews for Benvino is actually really funny because they said not remarkable, but tasty. I think it's really good. It's definitely worth a shot and it's $11, so why not? I love some red fruit, y'all. The third bottle, y'all, straight from Italy. Um, this is a Chianti, which I love Italian wines, um, but they have a, di a totally different taste, a totally different aftertaste than your California, than your um, you know, Canadian, than your New Zealand. These right here, I would say, would be my first love, my first introduction to red wine. Um, I went to Italy on my honeymoon. So <laughs> after you go to Italy, who can't fall in love with red wine? Um, a really important note and something that I questioned when we were in Italy was, what is this? Do you guys see this little seal across the, the wine? This is only something that's found on Italian wines. This is something that the Italian government used to protect counterfeiting of their wines, because Italy does not play about their wines at all. Um, they're very strict about what regions um, can make and produce certain grapes. So when we were in, I think it was like Hassaji, Biancelli, the Torino, I'm not telling you. But they are known for um, Barbarellos, they are known for Brunello's. They have Sangiovese grapes, and that's what that's what this is. So this D O C G, which I'll tell you because it's all based on a region, will tell you what this means. So this also helps with the classification. So it tells you, hey, this wine um, has certain production standards. 
which means they can guarantee what the great variety was, the brightness, the winemaking procedures. It's basically like the stamp of approval that says, hey, this wine gets our quality rating for Italy, which is huge. And they won't, they won't send out a bottle without these seals. So if you ever see this and you're like, I'm wondering what it is, each region has their own, um, has their own seal. So when we get back there, I would love to go to North Italy. Um, I would love to go to Lake Como. I would love to go to Milan. I would even love to get back to Italy, but I want to stick to the Northern portion. Um, I haven't gone to Vienna. I haven't gone to um, Florence. Um, so those are on my list for sure. But this is a Chianti. I'm not going to even try to pronounce this, y'all. But if I would, it's a Chianti Colo Cinci. This right here um, is a 3.7 on Vendino's list, which I was actually surprised. Um, and I don't know if that's because Vendino is a American app. So maybe we need to find an Italian app. Um, so this is a, a Sangiovese grape, which um, I feel like every wine in Italy, um, they always mention Sangioveses, which are beautiful, but they also have this aftertaste of this lemony flavor, which I love. And maybe that's because of the soil and that's because of the climate and that's because of that limoncello that they get lit on too. But, <laughs> so this one has cherry has red fruits, has strawberries. It also has a little smoke, um, but there's some mentions there as well of oak. So you got the Tabasco, you got that chocolate, which is great when it comes to that aftertaste. Um, I say for this, imagine yourself being wrapped in a blanket by a fire, fire, fire pit, fireplace, cooking some s'mores, you want. Also too a really cute reference um, with Chiante is if you think about our childhood you ever watch Lady and the Tramp and you remember the scene where they were actually eating spaghetti and they were having their cute little romantic dinner that's what they had they got taste. So this baby needs no mention she or he was on the bath time video Austin Hope um, one of my absolute favorites and how I discovered Austin Hope was um, probably after Napa and trying out some of those big boys that everybody used to talk about which are the, you know, the Silbrokes and the Camus and the Opus Ones and the Cake Breads and I was like, I'm not too impressed by them, but this I was probably referred to by um, one of my um, former colleagues out of Canada. So thank you so much for introducing me to this. Um, I think you could tell that I had a taste for certain types of calves and this right here, oh my gosh. So Austin Hope on the Nino's app rates a full 4.5. We took a big jump. It's absolutely worth it. And Austin Hope is, this one's a 2019. This one's also from Pasta Roble. So basically from Napa. Um, this one has definite mentions of vanilla, the oak, the chocolate, but you also get those red fruits. So you get the black, sorry, the dark fruits. You get the blackberries, you get the plums, you get the dark fruits. Um, and then you also definitely get that leather and the smoky at the end. Um, this bottle, I will tell you, I'm not quite sure how you can compare value when you look at a dollar, but I will tell you just from experience, this $55 bottle of wine, um, it only takes one. It takes one glass, a good two, before you are like, oh, I feel it. What is that? How did that happen? You can get to four on anything else. Not saying you should go to four, but you know, you can get two or three and you're like, why don't I feel this? Oh, I feel good. But this, first of all, the color is beautiful, but it hits instantly in a good way um i should look and see what's the al alcoholic volume so it's good it gets you a 15 percent right there okay but it definitely has the oaky flavors this is a beautiful wine when you pour it into the glass it's almost black um 
very glossy. The bright fruits come through extremely well. Um, this one's a medium body cap, but it drinks way bigger. Um, and I would say when you drink Austin Hope, absolutely put it in a decanter, aerate it, um, let the you know the air come in and enhance the flavors. And cheers, cheers to that. So we are at the very end of our price points, but some of my favorites, and we have made it all the way to the big boy, which is Silver Oak. I'm sure. You all have heard about it. If not, this is really good. It's one of my husband's favorites. I will say not one, this is his favorite. Um, so I actually have had the pleasure of going to this vineyard in Napa. And this was an amazing visit. Um, there are so many there to choose from, but I will say this 2016, definitely one of the best so this is number five on the list if you don't count this dow that we're drinking which comes in at 125 between 125 and 150 depends on where you buy it from um but it's well worth it this is not something i would say just pull out on a regular day but you know you know life is about living and enjoying it so if you want to drink silver oak just on a tuesday by all means do it and invite us over but this for us is going to be a birthday a holiday um, promotions um, congratulations party um, because this right here this right here on the Vendino scale gets you a 4.5 which is actually pretty cool because it gets the same rating as an Austin Hope so if you didn't want to spend 125 and you wanted to spend 55 and get the same type wine, even though we can't say Austin and Silver are the same, but they're in that range. They're, they're related. So 4.5 across the board. Silver Oak is gonna give you the same notes. It's gonna give you vanilla, it's gonna give you oaks, it's gonna give you chocolates. It's blackberries and plums and dark fruits. It's definitely got the smoky and the leather. And I would not serve this wine unless you had it aerated at least an hour before dinner. Um, and this is gonna be good for, I would say beef. Of course, everyone talks about red wine being for, you know, a heartier food. Um, I drink it with whatever I want because I have been trying to stay away from sugar. So red wine is also good for your heart haven't been told I use that at its best value have you ever noticed there's a difference between red wine glasses and white wine glasses white wine glasses excuse me the difference is red wine the cups are going to be bigger the tops are going to allow more air why because they want you to open up the actual notes they want you to actually taste the flavor so please don't Put a red wine in a white wine glass because you're not gonna get the full flavor also not saying like i am a wine aficionado you know i am but <laughs> everyone holds wine glasses different but it's so much easier just to swirl from holding it from the stem where some people hold it from the tip wine doesn't need as much aeration white wine is served at different temperatures it's chilled. It's not going to have that that flavorful note. It's going to be flavorful, but it doesn't need as much air to get into the glass. So you're getting this from red. So there's a reason why they're different. One more tip that I had to say, and you know, this is a personal preference. Everybody is different to each his own, but you're not supposed to put ice in red wine. I said it. Be mad at me but I know some people just like drinks chill the red wine is supposed to be um, enjoyed at room temperature white is supposed to be chilled so if I see you come to my house and put some ice and red wine and it is not sangria I'm gonna just smile but just say you saw the video and you was like man I don't care I'm gonna still put it in there but that's not the preference <laughs> So try it without, see if you like it.
with some food or some cheese on a charcuterie, just give it a shot. Don't knock it till you try it. Mm -hmm. This was so much fun, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to doing many more for you darlings. Cheers, happy holidays, happy new year. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you later. Bye.